hope that you had a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. <sighs> it just feels really good to be sitting down here and chatting with you because guess what? It's finale time. Finale, finale, finale with the Two Bays Chocolate Bar and I am excited to report that it's done. It is done. I finished it yesterday. Strawberry bonbon and cherry cordial were just hanging on to, not cherry cordial, amaretto, pardon me, were hanging on for the last little bit and I just, yesterday was such a satisfying moment to look down and see yet again another empty palette. So I'm sure you're curious how it stacks up, which is my favorite. You know, now that it's been year four, I've panned out the Urban Decay Naked palette, the Lorac Pro, Steel in the Light, Steel in the No, now to the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. I feel like I've hit a lot of the heavy hitters in the neutral palettes that are marketed to us via the large department stores and, and um, just with social media and everything. This palette has pushed me so hard this year, but in a very good way. Um, I feel like I found my groove with where I want to go with my channel, all the get ready with me's. In fact, I was kind of running a mental tally through the videos I've made this past year with the Chocolate Bar palette. I've been able to create 20 different video looks that I have panned. So I will go on and link the playlist in the card above. So feel free to check that out. I'll also link it at the end of this video. Um, so you're more than welcome because like I said, this chocolate bar palette has really pushed me to think outside the box, look into the rest of my collection. In particular, I got so much use out of my Too Faced Sugar Pop palette my Lorac Mega Pro palette, my Lorac Pro 2. Um, the reason I kind of stuck with Lorac shades is because they're they're consistently easy for me to move out, and so I thought that would be a good way for me to make some progress. But I also was able to go into shades um, from MAC, like my MAC palette I have over here with Sumptuous Olive as I pan Gilded Ganache. So I just, I feel so good um, about what I've learned from this palette in particular, I learned that I really love burgundy eyeshadow. Cherry Cordial was a shadow that just intimidated the snot out of me when I started this palette. By the end of panning it, I loved it. I got a little bored with Amaretto, but that's because I've been through that shade several times between each palette. Um, you know, I've mentioned it before, but there was Garnet in the Lorac Pro palette and Sunset and the Steel and the Light palette. So by the time I got to Amaretto, it's a beautiful shade. In fact, I have its counterpart, yet another do, <laughs> from the Lorac Mega Pro palette in the shade, um, what is it called? I think Maroon, Maroon. Like I said, it's same songs, you know, fourth verse now. So Maroon, it's literally the exact same thing as Amaretto, as Sunset, and as Garnet. So or Mac Antiqued, if you're a Mac fan. <laughs> so it's just like, it, I, I've really learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about neutral palettes and shades that these companies pick. Um, I really expanded out into the rest of my collection, but I still, like I said, I, I still learn a lot about myself no matter how many years um, I take on this challenge, how many different palettes. There's always something neat um, to, to figure out and, and work through, especially because I highly encourage you, if you've never done a pan that palette before or you're easing into it or, or maybe you've been intimidated by it, you've started it and haven't been as successful as you thought you would be from the onset, keep working hard. Keep, you know, putting in the, the time day in and day out because a lot of, in a lot of cases, when it comes to large palettes, we do have the situation where you look at a new palette and you think, oh, there's going to be shades that I won't use, or these are going to be my favorites. When you do something like pan that palette, it really gives you the flexibility to change your preferences throughout the year and figure out what you really like, because I will say it again, I say this with every single palette, but by the end of panning it, usually the shades that I could not stand in the beginning end up being my favorites because they push me to think. They push me to try something new and they, they challenge me in a way that um, keeps me excited and motivated because I'm just, I'm stubborn and I'm determined to figure out a way that works for me. And then oftentimes the shades that I think are going to be easy to pan end up boring me because 
they're easy to pan or because I just don't have to think about them and then, and then I just get stuck in kind of a rut if that makes any sense at all. I know it makes sense. I hope that translates. <laughs> any case, but um, when it comes to panning the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette versus Lorac Pro versus Stila versus Urban Decay, I feel like this palette was my favorite out of those five palettes because like I said, it pushed me to the brink of figuring things out because the shades like Gilded Ganache, which was a really um, brown colored olive green. Some of these shades were kind of duds. I did try every shade in this palette on my eyes. Some of them I was able to multitask. Milk Chocolate makes a lovely, lovely contour. Um, triple fudge was something I used for most of the year in my brows. Um, champagne truffle was a beautiful highlight on my face in addition to being eyeshadow. I also went through with hazelnut and hot chocolate. I used them as eyeshadows and I also used them as shimmery bronzers. Um, and then I also went through with semi-sweet. It made a beautiful contour in the summertime when I needed something a little bit stronger. But again, I loved using it in my crease as a matte eyeshadow. The shades that really kind of pushed me, Candied Violet. My original Candied Violet that I had in here was very faint, very gray, just a dud of a shadow. So what I did was I depotted it and I put in another purple shade that was pretty much the exact same color also from Too Faced, it came out of the original Shadow Bonbons palette, and I used that instead. It still had kind of that grayish effect, but, um, you know, it, it gave me the vibe of what I would have used Candied Violet for, you know, on my lower lash line, in my crease. I think I came up with four looks that used that particular purple, so like I said, go on and check out that playlist I'm going to link in the cards. I'll also include it in the description box below. Um, one of my favorite looks using purple was kind of a unicorn vibe look. I used the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette with um, Champagne Truffle, Strawberry Bon Bon, uh, Candied Violet type thing, and then I pulled in the blue from the Too Faced Sugar Pop palette. I loved that look. It was really, really beautiful in the summertime. And then I also had looks, um, I, I think it was my March Get Ready With Me maybe, where I used it on my lower lash line. Um, I had one where I used it in my crease with like a lighter purple, really, really pretty. Um, so, I mean, I'm trying to think through all the things I did, but some of the glittery shades, what I noticed a trend in, I mean, Too Faced is pretty notorious. They're great with their matte formulas, but their shimmers can be kind of hit and miss because they're either really chunky glitter or they're faint or they're just dirty looking muddy eyeshadows that are very hard to work with. Like in particular, um, Gilded Ganache, Candied Violet, um, Black Forest Truffle was another one. Um, I shared this tip throughout several Get Ready With Me's with Black Forest Truffle, but I ended up treating it like a matte shadow because I would go on and, and very gently um, swirl my brush in one time in the shadow. I'd knock off the glitter and then apply it to my eyes and it very much behaved like a matte shadow for me. Um, another shade that I did that with was Cherry Cordial because while it looks like a matte shadow in the pan, I know a lot of you commented even on social media that it was a matte shadow. It actually had quite a bit of sparkle in it, but I would once again go on and treat it as a matte shadow and I would knock off that excess glitter before applying it to my eyes. And it's kind of a similar look to what I've got going on today, except I've got my palette for next year. So overall, another successful year. I feel really good because this is palette number five to be moved out. Now, if it comes down to would I ever repurchase one of the palettes that I panned, I have to say it would probably be, be probably be the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. I'm not going to repurchase it anytime soon because I do still have a lot of neutral shadow in my collection that I would prefer to move out before taking on any more neutral palettes, but this was great. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a beginner palette because like I said, some of these shades required the time, the commitment, dare I say frustration, <laughs> um, because like I said, dealing with kind of dud formulas and figuring them out, like with Gilded Ganache, I finally figured out repressing it 
um, would help it to be more of the olive that it was supposed to be. And I loved pairing it with sumptuous olive all over my lid. Um, it was one of my favorite, most favorite fall looks that I came up with. Um, another one that I repressed would have been um, uh, Amaretto because that shade was just kind of, not that it had hard pan, but it just didn't have a lot of pigmentation. But once I repressed it, it came out to the strong burgundy that is quite similar to the look I have on my eyes today. So, you know, if you're if you're working through your chocolate bar palette or you're going to be panning it this year, I offer those tips to you to make it a little bit easier to work through. I will say though, before you repress those shades, make sure that you've already hit pan because they're, you know, they're gonna like, I guess the formula expands. Is that the term I'm looking for? But when you repress it back into the pan, there's something about the Too Faced formula. It doesn't just lay down flat. It kind of expands and you feel like you end up with more shadow than you started out with, which is kind of discouraging <laughs> while you're panning. But at the same time, it'll be good once you get those better payoffs. Um, the other thing that I kind of wanted to talk about, you know, was about like um, Strawberry Bonbon was another shade that people um, have also noticed is kind of a pain pain to work with. Um, I finally got the most use out of it using it to set my eye primer and I love the brightening effect it has under looks. In fact, I'm continuing that trend with another pink shade as I go into my next palette because I loved that effect so much. So I also wanted to share that tip as well. Um, I know several people have used it as blush or to um, highlight. I, I've really gotten into the shimmery highlighters this year, so I haven't done as much with the matte, but I really do love it to set my all over eye look and then go through with some of those really dark smoky shades just to kind of give a little bit more of a brightening effect without being so dark and muddy, if that makes sense at all. So feels good. It's done, 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 done. Moving out that packaging. And like I said, it would be the palette out of all the ones I've panned so far to repurchase, but I'm not going to replace it anytime soon in my collection because got to keep moving. Got to keep moving to get that eyeshadow out. So as far as my introduction for this year, it's going to be all about the Kat Von D Me The Loca Remix palette. In fact, the eye look I'm wearing today is quite reminiscent of my December makeup bag look. So I will want to link that in the card above if you want to see how to do it with the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. Um, I've also kind of talked about how you can do it with the Lorac Mega Pro palette because I pulled in maroon today since I'm out of amaretto and then the rest of the shades I pulled in from my Mi Vida Loco Remix palette. So let's talk about this because there's a lot of shadow, there's a lot of color. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a crazy ride this year. <laughs> um, the reason that I chose this palette is because I do need to shake it up for myself and put in a lot of color, a lot of vibrancy because I am tapped out on painting neutral palettes. I need some variety and I really, um, I, I enjoyed putting together monthly makeup looks and makeup bags so much this year that I want to continue that into 2018. So once a month, in addition to my Pan That Palette updates, look for those in the mid month, just like we have been doing for years now. Um, I'm also going to continue filming my makeup bags and I'll show you other palettes that I bring in and looks that I create because I, I get so inspired every time I look at this palette um, for color combinations that I want to create and videos. So I'm going to be very, very busy getting those ideas out for you this year because this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, in terms of finishing this whole palette, let's get real. <laughs> There's a lot of shadow here <laughs> and especially getting to the, the blues and the greens. Those are shades that I'm really going to have to kind of um, figure out and work with because they're not typically shades that I wear on an everyday basis. And so I'm going to see how far I can get with this palette. I do expect to be able to hit pan if not finish a lot of the shades over here because I'm very comfortable with this side of the wheel. My neutral wheel is kind of hit and miss because since this palette is on the older side, um, the shadows are quite powdery and the neutral wheel especially, I do have considerable fading during the day, especially from shades like um, Noble and Strutter. 
Um, skulls and Lyric and Mulder are kind of hit and miss, but I'm going to see what I can do with them. Um, I've had pretty good success with black metal as long, like when I use it as a liner, as long as I'm setting a liner. Um, in terms of using it like in an outer corner or whatnot, I do have some fading with that one, but like I said, these are older shadows. So um, if you also have the Mi Vita Loca Remix palette, come on and jump in. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'd love to see some friends painting this along with me because that was one thing. Um, just to kind of go through the experience from painting the, the Urban Decay Naked palette, year one of this challenge back in 2014, I really just, I had zero expectations. I, I didn't know what I was wanting out of my makeup. I just wanted to pan something to, to show myself that I could do it. Um, and so I often had a lot of moments where I got stuck with that palette and it was your encouragement and, and words of um, motivation and enthusiasm that kept me going through that challenge and then in 2015 it was like a huge light bulb moment because there were so many of us that were painting the Lorac Pro at the same time and it was fabulous because we shared so many ideas and and talked about what works and what doesn't and and just it, the team effort was absolutely um, what is the word I'm looking for but you, you just couldn't top it you know what I mean like it was just so crazy to have that kind of support and, and have that support system of friends that were also going through it. And then with Steel in the Light, Steel in the No, um, by then the challenge had really just launched and taken off. And, and it's been so fun. It's so fun to see all of the things that we're painting. And then like this year with Chocolate Bar, it was like an even bigger tidal wave of just creativity because it was like I finally got into my groove of what I wanted with my makeup. And I finally got into a groove of you know, being better about going around my other palettes because I didn't feel stuck to one palette. Like it was a completely different experience panning now than it was back in the beginning panning the Urban Decay Naked palette. So I want to offer you that encouragement if you're jumping into the challenge for the first time or, or maybe you didn't have the success that you wanted to last year, but you're going to give it another go this year. Like keep working at it because every second of dedication that you give to that palette is going to be hard work that pays off that you're going to get the satisfaction out of your makeup you're going to know what you want from it you're going to change your spending habits and then really get yourself moving towards your holy grail instead of wasting time on things that may work for you or things that you may like or you know what i mean like it's it's worth every second every frustration every victory every just moment of uh, you know reflection <laughs> because I mean there are going to be moments that you feel like why did I suck myself into this why why did I do this to myself but it is so worth it every single time I can tell you every single learning curve has been a step in the right direction even if it feels like you take a couple steps backwards so this year Kat Von D I'm anticipating there might be some moments where I'm, where I'm, you know, coming on here and, and saying, oh, this is so hard. But you know what? It's good for us to share. It's good for us to let our feelings out here and, and you know, get that good feedback and, and ideas because we're all in here because we love makeup. We love trying new things. We want to be creative. So let's do this. I hope you decided to jump in with me yet again. For another Pan That Palette Challenge, I wish you all the best. Be on the lookout. I'm going to be posting my um, December makeup recap or makeup bag recap as well as all of the items I'm going to be pulling in for January. And then it's time to get cracking on those looks with the Kat Von D Movie to Look a Remix Palette. So take care and I look forward to catching up with you real soon. See you later.